misfortune of coming across a few scary guys in my life. My friends will say I'm a weirdo magnet, so I'm pretty wary and clued up now that I'm a bit older. But when I was a teenager, I suppose you could say I was very naive. Back when I was 20, me and my family, my mom and my little sister, had moved from a small rural village in the Shires to a town down south. It was a huge change, and as I had been having a difficult time, I welcomed the change of scenery. It was a beautiful town in an affluent part of the country, but I struggled to find a job and became very frustrated as my mom needed a bit of help with money. Over the course of about three months, we became fairly friendly with a middle-aged guy who owned a takeaway shop in town. I will call him Phil. If ever he saw us doing some shopping, he would come and chat and he genuinely seemed like a decent, caring bloke. So when he said he might have a job for me in his shop, the small flat upstairs I could rent for next to nothing, I thought, okay, great, maybe things are looking up. Phil got our address and told me and mom that he would pop by early evening time when he had finished and take me in the car to go and see the flat. I get myself looking fairly casual, but presentable, and I'm feeling excited and kind of confident, thinking, wow, a job in a flat. I've killed two birds with one stone here. I just need to show him that I'm sophisticated and would make a great employee. Around 8 p.m., he knocks on the front door, and Mom answers. He tells her we'll probably only be about a half an hour, and he'll have me back safe and sound in no time. Now, I didn't take my phone with me, as I had no credit to call out, and I didn't think I would be needing it for a quick trip up the road and back. In hindsight, a pretty stupid thing to do. Maybe if I had my phone on me, it would have deterred him from what he was about to do. It's already dark out as it's March. I get into his car and we start driving. He's chatting away and asking how I am and telling me what the flat is like, when in the matter of a few minutes, I've noticed that we're not taking the conventional route that takes us directly to town. At first, I think he's taking me down some sort of shortcut around the town to get to it and just reason with myself that he knows the area well, and I don't. 30 seconds after, I realize he's taking me in the completely opposite direction, and I can tell that we're driving away from the populated town and into an area where trees swamp both sides of the road. My brain is now working overtime, thinking, where the fuck is this guy taking me? And I just about manage to keep my composure and ask him outright, where are we going? The town's back over that way. Just thought I would take you on a little tour. It's beautiful here. Many forests and peaceful places. I would love to show you. He tells me in his normal cheery tone. I wasn't capable of saying anything at that moment because the logical and reasoning sides of my brain were in a full-blown war. I'm trying to keep calm, thinking, okay, he seems fairly normal. Why wouldn't he want to show me around? It is a stunning area full of natural beauty. He's probably proud to show me where he lives. The logical side of me, however, disagreed, and a wave of panic comes over me, and a little voice enters my head and shouts, What? In the dark? Shit, no. Are you stupid? So I just sit there in silence, taking in the scenery, which is becoming more sinister by the second, because at that moment in time, I didn't know what to think. All I know is every cell in my body is screaming at me to find a way out of this situation. I started looking for signposts, houses, any distinctive landmarks, ditches, huge trees, anything I'd be able to use to recognize my way back if I had to bolt from his car. Phil can obviously sense I'm nervous, so is just talking away at me about what the job is like and how his staff are friendly. And before I know it, he has slowed down to a crawl and has turned down a little mud road with a dense tree line on one side and pitch black open fields on the other. My stomach literally drops and my body contemplates power vomiting all over his car because the reality of what's about to potentially happen hits me like a freight train. 
I'm thinking to myself, if I jump out here, I have to be able to run over muddy fields into literally nowhere. But my imagination starts flashing images of him grabbing me before I get a chance to get out of the door. So I just sit there, buckled in my passenger seat, not saying a word. I'm just thinking to myself, if he attacks me, don't make a sound. Don't give him the satisfaction of showing him I'm scared. My brain was about as useful as a chocolate teapot, and I was starting to get angry with myself for not doing something, but I was terrified. We come out at the top of this little dirt road, and there's a tiny car park surrounded by woodland with one car sat in it. It was very clear that there were people in there having sex, and as he pulls near the car, I realize he's brought me to a local dogging spot. He turns to me and put his hand on my knee. We should do what they're doing. With a deadly, serious expression on his face. I make this bizarre half-nervous laugh, half-garbled high-pitched whine, and try to laugh off the suggestion to show him I'm not into it, and I'm super uncomfortable right now. The alarmed expression on his face at my gurgled cackle, which sounds like I've swallowed a potato whole, clearly freaks him out and I'm mentally congratulating myself for my socially awkward and grossly unsexy reaction. It'll be fun. No one will see us. He persists. No, I don't want to. Plus, I'm kind of seeing someone right now. I lie. But he sits there, just smiling at me like a Cheshire cat. Like I'm going to miraculously change my mind at the sight of his weird face. Mum will be expecting me home now. I tell him, after an insanely uncomfortable 30 seconds more of this, as I try my damn hardest not to make eye contact. I'm sure she won't mind you being out a bit longer with me. You can trust me, you know? He tells me with a straight face, as we sit next to the sex wagon parked next to us. I sharply pull my leg away from his grip, and I tell him again, Mom is waiting for me. She'll start panicking if I'm not home in the next few minutes. Take me home. I look him straight in the face, and he knows that I'm not messing around. Okay, that's fine. I'll take you back now. Without another word, he drives me out of that creepy seedy place and back home. My finger is hovering over the seatbelt button, ready to jump out. As we pull up outside our home, I breathe a sigh of relief as I can see my safety literally a few feet away. And before he can stop me, I'm out and slam the door behind me. As I'm stepping over a tiny little rope fence around our garden, he gets out of his car and my heart sinks. I think I'll pop in and see your mom quickly, he tells me. And I swear I can see a smirk on his face, but I know he's only doing this because he's freaking out. Knowing damn well I'm going to tell her he was trying to delay the inevitable or scare me into keeping my mouth shut. Before I can try and talk him out of it, my mom has heard us pull up and open the front door. I barge past her with one thought on my mind. I head straight into the kitchen, grab a small knife out of the drawer, and fly into my little sister's room like a mad woman. Don't you dare fucking leave this room. No matter what you hear, I whisper to her. Seeing the knife I'm stuffing up my sleeve, she just looks at me with panic in her eyes and whispers back, Okay. I walk back into the living room, and the cheeky twat is sat on one sofa, sprawled out, comfortable as fuck like he's at home. I see red. I swear to God I felt like the Hulk. I'm ready for the bastard. I awkwardly perch myself on the arm of the sofa that mom is sitting on, the absolute furthest away from him I can manage, as he just sits there, making small talk with mom about how she's finding the area, are the neighbors friendly, all the while keeping his beady little weasel eyes on my every move. Why don't you come sit over here next to me? He pats the sofa cushion next to him. No, I'm all right here, thanks. I tell him, as I'm fidgeting with my sleeve, trying to stop the little knife from falling out in front of him. Why are you sat over there? Come, come here. 
Honestly, I won't bite. He laughs and pats the seat next to him again. No, I'm quite comfortable here, this time through gritted teeth. My mom, bless her, is looking at each of us during this back and forth like a tennis match, and I can see something is registering in her eyes. She can see my behavior is all off. I've got one bum cheek weirdly perched on the sofa arm, so I'm half stood up and half sat down, and I'm fiddling with my sleeve. I'm twitchy as hell and staring my mom in the face intensely, mentally trying to speak to her through the power of telepathy alone. I must have looked like a nutter. Uh, it's getting late now, so I think you should go, she finally speaks. My mom started to look anxious now, as she had finally twigged that something had happened. Phil gets up, agrees, and mumbles something about having to check something at his shop while he walks by me and is nearly out of the room when he pauses and turns to me and puts out his hand to shake mine. I'm thinking to myself, what a fucking weird thing to do. I take the opportunity to kindly offer my hand that had the knife, taking it with a bit more force than is polite. He soon yanked his grubby mitt out of mine when the tip of the blade had jabbed him. He looked down, saw the blade, then looked at me. I looked at him with such disgust. Phil hightailed it out of our home so fast without another word. A prick for a prick. I told mom everything and she was fuming. We did discuss going to the police, but there wasn't really a crime committed on his part, aside from being a major creep. Sadly, when I mentioned to a couple of girls my age who lived down our street, they clammed up and shot each other a strange look. I guessed he had probably done this type of thing before. We moved away from the area after that, so I'm glad to report I never had to see his smug face ever again. So, Kebab Phil, let's not meet. Definitely not the creepiest story I've seen on here, but still shook me up. This just happens while I was on my lunch break. I usually walk down by the river near my work and go for about an hour walk listening to true crime podcasts. It's a pretty quiet area with walking trails along the river with an industrial area on the other side of the trees. The few people I usually come across are regulars and I usually only see one person the whole walk. I usually carry a small can of bear spray just in case of creeps or coyotes, but of course today I didn't have it and left it in my jacket. So I start walking beyond the busiest part with lots of bikers and joggers and continue on to the quieter, longer path under a wooden bridge into the trees. Think almost like a nature reserve where the first part is more filled with playgrounds and lots of people. I start getting an odd feeling about 10 minutes in that someone is watching me and turn around to see a guy about mid 50s walking behind me. I didn't think much of it because he was in jogging clothes, so I thought maybe he was jogging out the way I was going. I walk a further five minutes and he's still behind me and just giving me really weird vibes, almost feeling like he's watching me walk. At this point, I'm way further from the busy area to the point where no one would hear me yell for help. So I end up stopping at a picnic bench just off the trail where I can still see the trail to see if he passes. I start texting a coworker to tell her about this guy and he walks up to the picnic bench to start talking to me. He starts making small talk to which I respond then starts asking weird questions like, oh, do you live around here? Do you work around here? Which way is your work? What time is your work expecting you back? This place sure is quiet, isn't it? So I tell him, yes, I'm on my way back to work. And I'm actually late, but my coworker has called me to handle something. A total lie as I had just started and not due back for an hour. He stands staring at me for a good solid minute while I'm texting my coworker his description just in case I go missing. 
he's still there, asking how long of a walk it is back. So, I say, oh, I can see my work from here, and point to one of the offices in the industrial area. But he is still not leaving. I punch in the number to 911, just in case I need to hit send. I didn't want to leave, as there was no one else around, and I didn't want him following me. Then, an older lady I see regularly walks by with her dog and says hi to me, so I quickly get up and start talking to her while walking. I see the guy get up and head back the direction I came from, the way he followed me from, so I go the other way with the lady, telling her how creepy he was. We walked the usual route, stopped at a picnic bench, and then walked back the way together. Creepiest part was on the way back. The weirdo was sitting on the original picnic bench that I was sitting. Not sure what his intentions were, but I'm so grateful for the woman walking by with her dog. I'm 23 right now, and this must have happened when I was 10 or 12. My cousin came to visit me during the summer. I live in a small town, and at the time, there probably wasn't even 2,000 people living here. I may not know everyone, but I do know quite a few people in my subdivision, enough to know that most of them are elderly or parents with kids. So this made what happened so strange. As the title says, I was just looking for my cat. She's allowed to go out, which has never been a problem, other than the time she ran away for a whole week. And ever since then, she's had a curfew. In my backyard, there's a football field, and then the bush, just more of a reason to have her inside at night. It was getting late, and she still hadn't come in. Of course, at the time, me not really paying attention, before I knew it, it was passing midnight and we were heading to bed. I noticed I hadn't seen my cat and started to freak out. I had looked everywhere in the house and had shaken her treats and nothing. I decided to try looking around the house outside and still I couldn't find her. I went inside to tell my cousin that I was going to walk up the street and see that maybe she was in someone's yard. I live on one of the end streets of the subdivision so there's a curve at the beginning of my street. And as I made my way up the street, I was yelling my cat's name out and checking yards as I went along. It was past midnight now, so I didn't expect anyone to be out. But there was this man. He was just standing at the end of Louis Street, which is only the second street after mine. He was just standing there, back facing me, on the other side of where the street light was, so I couldn't really see much of him. I didn't think too much of it because I was preoccupied looking for my cat. But then I noticed he turned and faced right, like completely turning his body to the right, and then straight ahead, and then to the left. As I was seeing this, I was kind of confused, thinking, what is this man doing? Is he looking for something? And then he turned and faced my direction and started walking, which again didn't startle me until I realized that he noticed me and started running. This full-grown man started full-out running towards me. I was so scared. I ran as fast as I could, but could hear his footsteps getting louder and closer. I was only four houses away from my own house, so it didn't take long for me to get there. As soon as I got in, I slammed my door and locked it. And just as I did, staring out the door window, heart racing, I didn't see anyone out there. Relieved I didn't, but sort of curious and confused, wondering where this man could have gone. I went to the living room to look out the big window that oversees the whole street. And nothing. No one. To boot, my cat was inside when I came in. I have no idea how or where this man came from or went, but I was just looking for my cat. It was terrifying, and on that note, let's not meet again. Hi, lovely friends. Before the video ends, I just wanted to thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight. Please like and comment if you enjoyed. It really helps me. 
I hope that you're doing well. I appreciate you. Please stay safe and sweet dreams.